Chapter 23 and 24. Planet Vegeta. I'm stunned by the turn of events, but even more by the question. My mind is racing and trying to find the best way to answer the question. A super scion god? I ask, stalling for time. Vegeta tosses the picture, which shows a short scion tinged red, his aura a maelstrom of fire and energy, to the table. Do not take me for a fool, he snarls. I know more of our history than any other scion alive. I know the signs, and I know the feeling. In my own time, I have met a god, and know how to sense their power. Fuck. All right, no bypassing this one. I think stepping back. While I was traveling before my fight with Frisia, I knew needed a power-up. I came across someone who had something called Ultra Divine Water that was said to release a person's full potential. If they could survive it, that is. You're saying that this water is what made the change? Vegeta asks. Yes, but it's temporary at best. Fourteen others before me died taking the water. I barely survived as it is. I explain as best I can. What of the other things? The transformations, the continued unknown growth. I've had your blood tested, and you are no different from any other full-blooded scion. For a time, I thought you may be a previously unknown genetic mutation, but the blood work tells me nothing. Yet, watching you in action, I can tell you know something. You're always moving forward. You know there is always another step forward to take. He asks, staring hard at me. That's because I do, I say, pacing a bit. Know that there is another step forward, that is. There is a heavy silence, for the space of several heartbeats, before he speaks again. How do you know? He asks. I can't tell you that, I answer. Sacred world of the Kai. Oh, oh, no. Shin whispers, again sensing the terrible power of his greatest foe. Supreme Kai, what is it? Kibito asks, startled from the book he is reading. We are in trouble, Kibito. I have been remiss in my duties, and much has happened. Majin Buu has been awakened. Shin explains. No. How, Supreme Kai? He asks, standing suddenly. I do not know. His last location would never have been able to generate the energy needed to power his resurrection. Shin explains, exiting the building they were in, staring far off into the sky. I do not know. What should we do? Kibito asks, following after. We need to contact the Kais. They are closer to this than we are. There may be someone in the universe that can be of assistance. Shin explains. I'll leave at once, Supreme Kai, Kibito answers before disappearing. Planet Vegeta, what do you mean you can't tell me? I am your king. Vegeta snarls, smashing the pillar next to us. The doors to the chamber are thrown open, one of Vegeta's guards rushing in, hearing the loud noise. Get out! He screams, blasting the guard out of the room. I'm sorry, Vegeta. I really am. But you need to trust me on this one. Knowing will do nothing but bring you more questions and very little answers. I'm not sure if I could truly explain it anyway. I reply, shaking my head. Vegeta is silent again, shaking from anger. For a moment, I fully expect he's going to attack me. He takes several deep breaths, calming down greatly before he finally speaks again. I don't accept that. I have nothing to threaten you with KLL, or else I would. You are hiding something that affects the entire empire. But for now, I'll shelve the discussion, as you have something much more important to do for me. Kakarot said that it would be possible for you to revive my son. Is that true? He asks. I nod. Yes. Not for another month or two. Potentially as much as five, depending on circumstances. Then that's what you're to do. Revive my son, and I'll let you keep your secrets. Vegeta orders. Yes, my king, I reply. However, if I feel that your secret is endangering us, I will find a way to end you. The Empire is more important than any single scion, even one as powerful as you. He explains. You try and fail, Vegeta. Of that I'm certain. I think. There is one thing we need to discuss that is of the utmost import, I say, getting his attention again. Does the name Majin Buu mean anything to you? Planet Vegeta, two weeks later. Everything moved very quickly after that conversation, explaining that there was a monster free in the universe that made Frieza look like a child in comparison was a quick call to action. Vegeta was quick to order four more gravity chambers and ramp up production of ascended super scions. I myself even got to spend another two weeks in the gravity chamber, maxing out my strength and endurance under 25x Earth gravity. 299 strength and endurance may not have been a massive gain, but with what little time I was able to spare for training, the gain was enough for now. I was in the middle of fighting two older scions, who were quickly approaching ascension. Their power levels would soon be more than high enough to actually benefit from the transformation, so I was learning their buttons to help push them over the edge. Faster! I yelled, ducking under a punch thrown by the one on the left, catching his arm above me, and throwing him through the air. I rolled to the right, barely dodging the other's blast of energy, jumping to my feet and returning fire. My own blasts catch him, knocking him back a dozen feet before he is able to block some of them. The other scion closes on me, hoping to catch me off guard, but my ability to sense energy is perfect. 
I catch his fist, dragging him close and headbutting him in the forehead, as the other kicks at the back of my head. Pushing through, I duck down, allowing the kick to catch the other in the face, knocking him completely out. As I turn to attack the remaining fighter, I freeze in place, a look of growing horror on my face. Stop! I order, the scion stopping his attack. What's wrong, Captain? He asks, studying me. I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. I reply, looking around the area. I stretch my senses out, trying to find what is bothering me so much, but I can't find it. There is something wrong, but I can't pinpoint it. There is a sudden bing from my scouter, alerting me to a call. Reaching up, I tap my scouter. Cockerote. What is it? I ask. I'm not sure. I have a bad feeling. He answers. I feel it as well. I'm going to come pick you up. Something bad is happening. I answer, turning towards the other scion. Training is over for the day. Take your friend to the healing tanks. Dismissed. I say, disappearing with a pop. I reappear high above the capital city, where Kakarot had stopped flying to contact me. Kakarot, I say when I appear. I don't know where it's coming from. Damn it. He says. I know, I feel it too. I think something is coming. I tell him. Do you think it's that monster you told us about? Kakarot asks. No. I don't think it's that. I say, stretching my senses out. We're silent for a time as I try my damnedest to sense out everything around us. Several minutes pass before I finally feel it. There. I yell, pointing to the sky. A Scion space pod breaks through the atmosphere, heading right for the landing pads. I grab Kakarot's arm, using instant transmission to appear at the landing pads. Clear the area now. I order the Scions that are attending the landing pad. They salute and rush off in every direction, quickly following my orders. The space pod slams into the soft landing pad, quickly coming to a rest. I can sense a power level within that is practically boiling. It's so condensed. Even as compacted as it is, it's nearly 450 M. Whatever being is inside is immensely powerful. The door pops open, the sun casting a shadow covering the face of the tall figure within. He stoops as he steps out into the sun, and I'm finally able to get an observed to stick. Name Broly. Title, the legendary Super Scion. Race, Scion Anomaly. Age, 44 years. Status, alive. HP, 14,482,751. LVL 29. Broly is the legendary Super Scion. Born once every few generations, the legendary Super Scion is Chaos Incarnate. Born with infinite potential, they quickly reach a point of no return, their rage as infinite as their power. Broly has been in exile for over 40 years, returning only after sensing another power level like his own. He has been fighting his nature for decades, after killing his own father in a fit of rage at 11 years old. Quest success. Story quest. Long-term goal. Discover the fate of Broly. Reward, 45,000 XP. My eyes widen as my heart rate skyrockets. I see Broly's eyes tighten as he stares around the area, taking in the home he'd never gotten to see. My mind is racing a thousand thoughts a second, piecing together every little bit I remember of my past lives' knowledge. The feeling of foreboding from earlier has reached a fever pitch, the warning nearly screaming in my ear. I flood my body with my energy, but I still feel as though I'm moving in slow motion. The knowledge that we nearly died fighting Mini Broly in the form of Sana at the forefront of my mind. I can only imagine what facing a full-powered Broly would be like. My eyes widen even further, almost comical in appearance, as I feel my vision slip away. Mind's eye activate, flash. Broly's eyes meet my own, taking in my appearance before they switch to the Scion standing right next to me. He freezes mid-step, his whole body tensing as the air around us swirls. The air thickens, oppressive, as his power level skyrockets. His aura rushes out, swirling around him in a maelstrom of putrid green, as his thick black hair lifts, spiking, tinging green. I'm moving in perpetual slow motion as I grab Kakarot, using instant transmission to pop us away. We appear nearly a mile away as I immediately ascend to Super Scion, pushing further past to third grade. The energy fills me, my aura a glowing beacon of yellow energy, as I scream. Super Kaoken times four. My aura transitions to the burnt orange, my power level slamming to over 4B in an instant. Kakarot. We hear the scream shaking the air as the ground beneath us shakes as well. Cracks are spreading as a growing circle of destruction begins flowing outward, with Broly's glowing form right in the center. His power level never stops growing, moving so quickly that I can't even get a real read on it. Kakarot. We hear again as a wall of energy explodes from the landing pad. The wave of energy is moving too fast for us to even react as it spreads rapidly flash frying everything it touches. The wall quickly reaches us, slamming into us as well. My last thought is that there is no stopping that. Minds I deactivate. Flash. Broly's eyes move to meet my own, taking in my appearance, but I'm already turning. 
As I turn enough to face Kakarot, my hands are flying up, barely reaching chest high. Before I release the energy I was able to build up in the fraction of a second I was moving, the beam of energy slams into Kakarot's chest, carrying him with it, smashing him through several buildings. I turn again back to Broly, hoping that I was fast enough to avert tragedy. My eyes meet Broly's, his eyes wide at what to him must have seemed like an unprovoked attack. His body is alternately tensing and relaxing as his power level jumps between 450M and 600M. I reach up, tapping my scouter, quickly bringing up Kakarot's connection. What the fuck was that? He asks as it connects. I can't explain right now. Do not come back to this area. Actually, leave the planet for all our sakes. I'll explain as soon as I have this under control. I say, disconnecting the call. Is this planet Vegeta? Broly asks from where he stands. It is. Welcome home, Broly. I reply as he cocks his head to the side. Vegeta slams to a stop, dropping to the ground next to me. Looking between the two of us, he clearly wants to ask a question. I turn slightly, making brief eye contact before he speaks up. Who is this, KLL? He asks, staring Broly down. I frown for a moment, before realizing that this course of action must not lead to my own death, or I'd have seen it by now. This is Broly King Vegeta, I say, seeing the recognition in his eyes. He's the legendary Super Scion. I can feel Vegeta's energy begin to increase, but I quickly put a stop to that. Stop! I yell harshly. He freezes for a moment, glancing at me. The last time I spoke so harshly to him flashes through his mind, where his attack on Sana nearly got us all killed. As we have a silent conversation, Broly begins walking forward. I tense, waiting for the mind's eye to activate, but it never comes. Broly closes to within 10 feet of us, before dropping to one knee, bowing. King Vegeta, I'm here to ask for your help. Planet Vegeta, age 737. Paragus lays in bed, having just hours ago returned from space. His sleep is fitful, empty, with the loss of his wife. He jerks awake, his scouter binging repeatedly, alerting him to an incoming call. He grabs it, slipping it on and connecting. Yes, what is it? He asks. Paragus? It's Heron. The voice comes through. Heron? What is it? Paragus asks, wondering what could prompt him calling. Paragus, we don't have much time. Your wife gave birth yesterday, right? Named him Broly. Heron asks, the urgency in his voice very evident. Why yes? Why? Has something happened to him too? He asks, climbing from his bed. You need to come to the hospital now. Right now. Don't tell anyone you're coming. He says, hanging up. It takes a moment for the urgency in his words to really hit. But once they do, Paragus is flying as fast as he can. He can only wonder what is happening. Land quietly on the roof, he spots Heron standing near the rooftop entrance. As he approaches, Heron motions him to be silent as they slip down the stairs. A quick walk, with Heron checking around corners as they go before they reach his office. Heron closes the door, locks it, and closes the blinds on the door as well. What is this all about, Heron? What are you doing here? Paragus asks once they are sitting. I work here, idiot. After I lost my arm, they needed to find a place for me. Combat medic transfers well to nursing, even if I only have one arm. That's not important, though. Heron explains. Yeah, I'm still waiting for you to explain that. What's wrong with Broly? Pargus asks. Heron sighs, opening a folder that was waiting on his desk. Your son was born with an unusually high power level. Normally, this wouldn't be much of an issue, but with how high it is, it prompted extra tests. What does that mean, Heron? Explain, damn it. Paragus snarls. Your son was born with a power level of over 10,000. During the tests performed afterward, it was found that his genes are mutated. I don't fully understand what that means, but the doctor that ran the test left immediately to transmit the data to the palace. They even had to pull up extra data to figure out what standard procedure is. Two of the other doctors looked very grim over it. Heron says, standing up. 10,000? Shit, that's insane. What do you mean his genes are mutated? Pargus asks. They didn't explain. All I know is that it doesn't look good. I could be wrong, Paragus, but I think they plan to kill your son. Heron says as he opens the door. Paragus is floored. Everything seems to be crashing down around him. Are you serious right now? Why would they kill my son? He's so strong. I don't know, damn it. All I know is that when they pulled the data, they had to call the head of medicine to unlock the files. Whatever was in those files is causing them to panic. Heron says, motioning to the door. Your son is down the hall five doors. He's in the first or second row of incubators. You need to take him and go. Don't stop for anything. Heron explains. Paragus pauses, unable to think of anything to say in rebuttal. He'd fought with Heron by his side on the fields of Estra, in one of the only Scion revolts. They'd killed together, nearly died together. If it wasn't for Paragus, Heron would have lost his life, not just his arm. Thank you, Heron. Paragus says as he brushes past him, rushing down the hall. 
Heron watches his back as he enters the fifth door down. You're welcome, Captain, he tells the empty hallway. Paragus rushes down the hallway, pushing into the fifth door, quickly coming across the incubators that house the full-blooded Scion babies. The room, even at this late an hour, is a cacophony of screams and crying. Come on, come on. He thinks as he rushes down the row. Reading the name tags as fast as he can, he quickly finds his son's incubator. While most of the other babies are crying, sniffling, or sleeping, his own son is quiet. Laying on his side, he is practically glaring at the scion child in the incubator next to him. Following his eyes, Paragus recognizes the name of the child. Kakarot, huh? Bardock sure knows how to name them. He says, before turning back to Broly. Paragus reaches down and grabs his son, making his way back to the hallway. Looking both ways, he rushes back to the stairs leading to the roof. It's a short flight to the nearest launch pads. His own rank in the Scion army quickly gets him a pod, no one even bothering to ask why he is carrying a small child. As the pod closes, sealing tightly, Paragus holds his son close to his chest. You're all I have left, Broly. I won't let anything happen to you, I promise. He whispers as he falls asleep. Heron would be executed two days later for his part in Paragus's escape. Planet Kara, age 748. Come along, son, Paragus says as they exit the passenger ship. Many things had changed over the years for Paragus and his son. Being on the run was rough for them, but Paragus was willing to sacrifice everything for his son. Cutting both of their hair and removing both of their tails, they could pass as any general humanoid alien species. Moving from planet to planet, they quickly disappeared into the millions of planets that made up the occupied section of the galaxy. It had been four years since Paragus last felt that they may still be in danger. The two worked their way through the crowd, aiming to buy supplies at one of the many stalls in the trade center. Keeping an eye on Broly would never be easy, but his son tended to stay close to his side regardless. Unknown to Paragus, today would be the day that changes everything. As Paragus haggles with one of the many vendors, he hears his son scream for him. Whipping around, he quickly notices that his son is nowhere to be seen. Broly, he yells, rushing through the market, trying desperately to see his son. As he makes it to the entrance, he ignites his aura, launching into the air. The crowd around him scatters, sensing that nothing good will come from this. Broly, he screams, using his energy to make his voice carry as far as possible. Daddy, he hears from somewhere below. Shit, he thinks, finally spotting his son. He lands hard, the ground cracking slightly beneath him. He pushes through the screaming crowd, rushing around him, pushing, shoving, trying to exit the would-be battlefield. He pushes his aura out, blazing it in a show of force. Put him down, Tora. He yells as he breaks through the crowd. Tora, famed lieutenant under Captain Bardock, holds Broly by the arm. He looks up, hearing his name. So I was right, hmm? When my scouter alerted me that this small child had a power level of over 18,000, I was sure it was a glitch. Of course, I had to investigate, to think I would find Paragus and his little mutant. Ha ha ha. Tora laughs, ignoring the menacing look Paragus is giving him. Put my son down, Tora. He hasn't done anything to anyone. Paragus yells. I'm under orders, Paragus. You know how it is with criminals. You and your son are wanted men, and I'll be taking you in. Fasha and Shuggish will be here soon. You can either come along now, or we'll beat you down first. Make your choice. Tora orders. Think about what you're saying. How can my son be wanted for anything? He hasn't been on planet Vegeta since he was born. Tora, please, we fought together once. We were friends, or so I thought. Don't do this. Paragus begs, looking at his son and Tora. Tora pauses for a moment, seeming to think about it. I'm sorry, Paragus. I really am. I'm a good soldier, and I follow my orders. Those orders say to bring you and your son in, dead or alive. He answers finally, raising his free hand, a glowing ball of white forming. Paragus's eyes harden as he rushes forward, his aura blazing around him. Taken aback, Tora abandons his attack, throwing Broly to the side and blocking Paragus's opening attack. Dodging back, his ducks another punch and the follow-up kick. Even though Paragus is nearly a decade older than Tora, Tora has spent most of his career on suicide missions, while Paragus was with the elites. Dropping down, he kicks Paragus's feet from beneath him, capitalizing on the man's blind rage. Pushing off of the ground, Tora spins in the air, bringing a kick down on the older man's back, smashing him into the ground. Using the force of the kick, he flips back, landing on the ground. Stop it, Paragus. I don't want to kill you. Tora orders as he squares up. Paragus snarls, pulling himself off of the ground, launching forward again. His attacks come at blazing speed, putting Tora on his toes as he works to block and dodge. Two hits make it through, knocking the wind out of Tora, which gives Paragus the chance he needs to really close the distance. Paragus grabs Tora's head in his hands, yanking him down for a harsh knee to the face. 
The wet crack of Tora's nose is heard by everyone nearby, as blood gushes from the wound. As Paragus yanks him back down for another devastating knee, a blast of energy slams into his side, launching him off. He lands on his side hard, rolling, before jumping back to his feet. Daddy! Broly yells, trying to rush to his side. No Broly! Stay out of this! Paragus orders, turning back to his attackers. Tora stands there, holding his nose which is pouring blood down his chin and chest. Beside him are Fasha and Shuggish, having arrived as expected. There is no way I can take down all three. Tora was hard enough as is. Fuck. He thinks, sizing them up. Holding his side slightly, definitely bruised from the prior attack, he starts pushing out more of his energy. Broly, get to the ship and leave. He orders as he launches forward, slamming harshly into Shuggish, knocking him away. As he spins in the air trying to kick Tora, Fasha grabs him around the neck, dragging him back. Tora jumps forward, landing three solid hits into Paragus's stomach, knocking the wind out of him, making him gag. Run Broly! He yells, struggling to break free. A punch to the jaw snaps his head to the side, nearly knocking him out. Blood is pouring from his mouth, the damage too much to easily shrug off. As his vision starts to fade, he can only hope that Broly made a run for it. As long as he would live, Paragus was fine dying to protect him. The ground starts to shake, bringing him back to full consciousness, as the area is bathed in green light. Daddy! Broly screams as his aura appears around him. What the fuck? Shuggish says as his scouter bings to life, alerting him to the threat in front of them. Broly screams, a visceral sound of agony and rage, as his pitch black hair spikes slightly, tinging green. Tora rushes forward, trying to attack him, but is slammed away by an invisible wall of energy, bouncing harshly off the ground. Be Broly! Paragus whispers as the ground around them starts to crack and rise into the air. Fasha releases Paragus, sounding the retreat, as Tora drags himself from the ground. The three of them begin to run away, as a blinding wall of energy erupts from Broly's rising form, the very air around them boiling with the intensity. As Broly's scream reaches a fever pitch, the ground explodes, a burning wall of energy spreading in all directions. All he can see is red. Broly wakes up, lying on the blackened, cracked ground. The sandy ground is cracked, nearly glass, from the intensity of the blaze. Broly looks around the devastation, surrounding him nearly unfathomable. Burned, broken bodies as far as he can see, the once lively trade depot almost completely destroyed. The screams of the living are nearly overpowered by the screaming wind filling the area. D-Daddy! He whispers, trying to find Paragus. He wanders through the wreckage, searching for a time. He'd never find a trace, but inside he would always know he was dead. His own power and rage had taken what little he had. It would set the tone for the next two decades. Unknown Planet, age 752. Broly jerks awake from the same nightmare he's had every night for the past four years. His breathing is heavy as his muscle bulge, increasing in size from the fear and rage he feels. He concentrates, struggling to hold his rage back. It takes a time, but he manages again. Never again, Dad, I'm sorry, he whispers, closing his eyes. Unknown Planet, age 755. Graph, he screams as the beams of energy slam into him. He's tried so hard, for so many years, to contain the rage within him. Time and again, time and again, he seemed to find himself in danger. As the pain and anger pushes his rage to another height, he feels himself slip away again. He knows that when he wakes again, he'll find nothing but death and destruction in his wake. Unknown Planet, age 759. Using his own hands to push the final log in place, he stands back to look at his first real home. Broly had been looking for a planet just like this one for a very long time. Small, alone, with little in the way of intelligent species. He'd work the land and be alone and for once have peace. Peace. I wish we could have found it together, father. You died protecting me, hoping that I would live to see another day. I do this for you. He whispers, staring up at the darkening sky. He would know peace for many years before being forced to leave the planet. He would heal and grow and learn to live with himself. One day, many, many years from now, he would sense something that would give him hope. He would sense a power, not unlike his own, and feel it disappear nearly as quick. He would imagine a chance for redemption, a chance for control. He would abandon all he had built, leaving the house he had built, the land he had worked. He would go home. Planet Vegeta, age 781. Home, Broly thought, staring around at the buildings around him. He doesn't quite know how the child knew his name, but he has far more important questions to ask. A second scion lands near the young child in front of him. This scion isn't the one previously blasted away. The planet around them was alive in a way that he hadn't felt in decades. He's nearly overwhelmed by the sights, smells, and sounds. It's almost too much to bear. This is Broly King Vegeta, the young scion says. He's the legendary Super Scion. 
King Vegeta Super Saiyan. Broly thinks, puzzling the situation over. The young child yells at the king, which is equally as confusing in that he listened. Broly steps forward once, hesitating, before stepping again. He walks quickly now, gaining confidence with each step. As he finally approaches King Vegeta, he stops, kneeling in the way he had observed years before. King Vegeta, I'm here to ask for your help. He says, his head bowed. There is silence for a moment, a long moment. Enough that Broly looks up to see King Vegeta and the child sharing a look. What do you need, Broly? The child asks. Broly looks to King Vegeta, before turning back to the child. I need help controlling the monster that I've become. 